I'll go over. Um, I put together some slides that we can talk over, but basically um, I'll talk about like my undergrad experience. I also went to UIC um, and then I'll talk a little bit about like what I'm doing in med school now. Um, I don't really want the slides to be like the main focus of what we're talking about today. I'd rather have more like of a conversation. go through some of that stuff like in the presentation but I mean as much as we can make this a dialogue that'll be the most beneficial and like the most um, interesting so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can share oh is it possible for me to share my screen so I can share the slides yeah let me do Perfect. that thank you there you go okay perfect let's see and then I'll do this um, all right. Does it look weird to everyone where it's like the multiple slides split or does it show up like normal, like a presenter view? I see the split. Okay, you also see the split. Let me see if I can figure out a way to not show that. Um, Let me try something real quick. This. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've had like this issue in the past where I am not able to like. Uh... Oh, wait, 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 I think I figured it out. So All right, I'm going to share my screen again, and then we'll try this again. Okay. Okay. Does that look normal to everyone now? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so basically, uh, so basically, we'll talk a little bit about um, my path to medical school. Uh, so I think the one really important thing to like understand is that there's really no linear path. Um, for everyone, they're gonna have a different experience. Like we all come from different backgrounds. We're all gonna have different undergraduate experiences. We're all gonna be doing different things. Um, and I think it's just important to understand that what worked for me and what's worked for other people may not work for you. Um, it's just things, you can plan as much as you want, but sometimes things just don't work out the way that they do. I mean, I know everyone that I talk to of like my friends who are in medical school, whether it be at UIC or other places, we've all had like, some things that have happened to us that have been like set us back a little bit of time or maybe things didn't work out on our first try we had to like go ahead and like maybe retake a class or like retake the MCAT or something like that so I think it's important when you're applying to med school to have some patience with yourself to understand that this isn't an easy thing that you're trying to do and um, just making sure that no matter what it is whether it's med school or something else whatever your goal is that as long as you're making progress little by little over time, that's like the main thing and eventually you're going to get there. Um, all right, so I was really, really fortunate and I had some pretty early exposure to the medical field. Um, I went to the Illinois Math and Science Academy out in Aurora for high school. Um, and while I was in high school, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, I was interested in medicine and I was pretty lucky where um, during like one winter break, I was able to go to like rush uh, I'd like take a bus from like school to the city. Um, and we were able to like talk to a bunch of physicians, learn a little bit about like medicine. We learned how to like take blood pressure and read EKGs and things like that. And so that was like a pretty early exposure that I had where I was interested in medicine, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, and so I got pretty lucky with that. But then undergrad is when I really started to transition and realize that like medicine is what I wanted to do. Um, so I went to UIC, like I mentioned before, and I studied bioengineering. Um, so I had always been interested in engineering. I just thought like nanorobotics and like 3D printing like organs was like such a cool concept and it's something that I really wanted to study during undergrad. Um, and so I studied engineering and I did a concentration in cell and tissue engineering while also taking like my pre-med classes. So I entered in 2015 um, and I was able to graduate in 2019. So I did the full like four, uh, four years. I was also part of the honors college. Um, and like the one big thing that I took away from like my major and doing everything is honestly like it's so important during your undergrad time to just major in what you want to do. Um, 
a lot of my friends were all bio majors and like that's what they wanted to do that was the most direct path for them to get into med school but like i knew that for me when i'm like in school and i'm spending so much time and also like money studying something i want it to be something that i'm interested in so um it's never too late to like switch up your major it might set you back a couple more years but if you're more happy like studying something else uh, that's going to be the most important thing like there are plenty of my classmates that are like english majors or like history or things like that and so it's you don't always have to major in like engineering or chemistry or bio any of those like the more classically associated with like med school majors in order to get um to med school in the long run um so during undergrad i also did a bunch of research i think this is one of the main focuses of my application when i ended up applying um, just because research had been something that i had been interested in for a really long time and it was something that i sought out a lot during undergrad um so i did basically two i had two research positions at the same time for most of the time i was an undergrad um the first one being like a the Department of Pathology where I was studying prostate cancer. Um, and I worked there uh, for like around three years and I like continued working there during medical school and I'm still working there right now. Um, this was a little bit more of like a wet lab experience. So I was doing like uh, working with cells and things like that. And then I contrasted that with my other research position where I was at Stroger Hospital. This is a lot more like clinical research, which was very different from um, the other one that I talked about. And I only worked there for like two years, but I think it was important for me to have this contrast between the two just to see what I liked more. Um, also, it gave me a lot more talking points on my application when I did apply and like interviewed and everything. Um, the one important thing that I take away from this, though, is that it's just important to have serious involvement in one thing. Um, it doesn't matter if you are there for like years and years like I was, as long as you make the most of the time that you have been there, you build those connections, you like put in work and show that you're like fully committed to um, whether it be research or like volunteering or something else, that's what the um, the people interviewing are going to really be looking for. Like they're going to be seeing like, what did you do with your time that you spent there? Um, so just making sure that you're putting your best foot forward and like really giving everything that you do the best effort uh, is the most important. I mean, I've talked to people in the past and I've told them like, if you don't enjoy the research you're doing, like don't stick with it, find something else that you're really going to be passionate about because it'll be easy to put in those hours and the time um, really making sure that you're getting the most of that experience. Um, so actually, I was able to do a bunch of internships, which I just think was, I just got really lucky and I like worked really hard in order to make sure this was something that I um, got to do. I was able to actually travel for this a little bit. Um, so it was a combination of making sure that I was getting experience. I also got to travel. I got paid for a lot of these. Um, I mean, there's a ridiculous amount of internships. I just think that they might not be as like it's not as well known so you have to go searching for them a little bit um, but most schools across the country host like internships for a variety of different things so um, the summer after my freshman year I participated in the Chicago Cancer Health Equity Collaborative so it's like this brand new thing in Chicago where they were just looking at like disparities that are present in cancer research um, the year after that I was actually able to go to San Diego um, for the summer and I participated in this like research program specifically for MSTP, which is uh, the programs where you do an MD and a PhD at the same time. Um, and they taught us a little bit about like what the program was. We got some clinical experience. We were in like the hospital. Uh, we also did some research and I was actually able to, from that research, present at a national conference, which is um, uh, Abercams and that was held in like Phoenix. So I got to travel again during the year after that. Um, and a lot of this was like funded for me and I like got paid for all of this. Um, it was just like making sure that I did the applications and like found this internship. So um, it's unfortunate in undergrad looking for these internships, it falls onto you a lot of the times to search out for these things and find um, the opportunities. And then the summer after that, I ended up just working full time in the pathology lab doing some more research. I was able to live in Chicago. I like got an apartment with a couple of friends for the summer and we just like basically hung out and I like worked nine to five and then after five I was like free to do whatever I wanted so it was a nice time just got worked really hard in the lab but then I also had some time to just really enjoy um, being in the city in terms of extracurriculars I had like a pretty good variety of things so I uh, did online tutoring through varsity tutors um, I also taught um, like elementary kids uh, in the city like science because a lot of the science programs are being cut at the time and so this was an opportunity for like 
UIC to help like supplement um, some of the programs that were being cut. Um, also, I think it's important to kind of highlight some of the courses you've taken. If you've taken like some really interesting courses um, in your school, like that's something that you can definitely put on your application. Um, so a couple of the bioengineering courses I took allowed me to like work directly with companies and help develop them a product or like give them a pathway on like how to get a patent for something that they've been working on. And that was something that I was able to highlight in my application, which I think helped me definitely stand out. Um, and then I was also president of the UIC men's club soccer team, which is actually how I met Juan. Um, and so we competed like in the region and like it was a lot of um, like planning that went into it and everything, but it was also a leadership role that helped uh, me just to have like one more thing to add to my application. It's also something that like I love to do. I've been playing since I was like five. And so it was nice to be able to combine that interest with also something that um, I was able to talk about a little bit in my application. Um, so when thinking about like extracurriculars, I think it's just important to highlight like any leadership roles that you have or volunteering, um, just making sure that when you're when you're starting to sign up for these extracurriculars and like getting involved in different things, thinking about like how, not only what are you interested in, but how is this gonna look in an application to make sure that you're the most well-rounded student possible? Um, not necessarily like putting all of your eggs in one basket, but making sure that you're like spreading them out pretty evenly and making sure that um, you are just like having a variety of different experiences to talk about. Okay, so jumping in a little bit more into like the meat of things, this is like the MCAT, which is, it's a terrifying exam. Like no one wants to do it, it like sucks. It's not fun at all, but I think it's, it's a necessary step of getting into med school and it helps prepare you for a lot of the standardized exams that you're gonna have to take during med school. Um, so just kind of thinking about my timeline, uh, I ended up taking mine the spring of my junior year. Um, so the fall before that, I started, started thinking about the MCAT and like started asking around, seeing what resources other people before me had used. I was uh, fortunate enough to have had some friends who were a little bit older than me who had taken the MCAT already or who were in med school. And so I had those connections already built where I was able to go to them and be like, hey, what worked for you? What didn't? Um, the winter of 2017, I was able to take the Princeton Review MCAT boot camp over winter break. So basically every day from around like nine to six, I was in a classroom studying um, overall the material. And I've just found that really helpful. Um, during the spring of 2018, I just took a bunch of practice exams. I also did like questions of the day and then I reviewed a bunch of concepts. Um, this just helped me to kind of like make sure that I was practicing as much as I can. I think the practice exams in particular are some of the most helpful things because it helps you starting to think about the way that questions are gonna be asked, but then also getting the timing down, making sure that you're not getting too tired by the end of it. Um, and then in May of 2018, I ended up taking the MCAT. Uh, I was initially supposed to take it in April, but I didn't feel ready at that time. So I pushed it back until like right after finals and then I took it and I, uh, I ended up scoring a 513, which I was like really, really happy about. Um, and I'm happy to talk with anyone like after this, if you wanted like more tips on like MCAT and stuff like that. Um, in terms of resources, I think the main, these are like the main ones that I use. I know like everyone has their different things. Um, I know that I'm a very visual learner and I think that's important before you start studying for the MCAT or any of like these big exams to like really put in the work to understand how you study best because everyone can tell you different things but if it's not going to work for you you can just honestly be wasting your time studying by like reading a textbook so like I know for me I hate reading from textbooks I don't like reading the concepts like that I'm a very like visual learner and like very tactile learner so I like working with my hands or like being in a classroom and being able to like watch what's happening and then starting to apply that um, like concepts and everything. So uh, the Princeton Review course was like one of the best things that I honestly did. It is really, really expensive though. So like, it's not for everyone like that cost definitely comes in to like play here. I mean, you were paying a bunch for, med for undergrad uh, and they're gonna be paying a lot for medical school. So I found it really helpful for me. I was very fortunate to like have a lot of support from my family. So I was able to take this course and I thought it was really helpful. But I mean, if it's not, if you're not able to financially afford that, like there's other options for sure. I know, I think the school, honestly, I think they fund some course. I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure they have like a Kaplan summer program or something like that, um, where you can get it either cheaper or for free. Um, and so just looking into some of those other 
opportunities could be really, really helpful if you know that you might need to have that classroom setting. Um, some of my other friends didn't take any classroom review. They just studied from the book or studied from um, their notes and everything from undergrad. Um, I also did like questions of the day. I thought those were really, really helpful. I just kind of Googled like MCAT question of the day. And I did like every day I did at least one car section. And then I did some math reading in English just to kind of start off my morning. I'll just do a question, get it out of the day and then move on with the rest of my day for like my studying or like whatever classes I had. Um, and then honestly, like I mentioned before, practice exams are some of the best ways to practice. Um, I've continued to realize that more and more, especially while studying for med school. The more questions you see, the easier it is when you come to the exam, because you're going to be able to think in a way of like, I've seen a question like this a thousand times before. I know like what I need to do. You like know what to expect the day of the exam. Uh, and you're just that much more prepared. All right, so just take a quick sip. Thinking a little bit more about like the application and the interview process. In terms of like recommendations, these are some of the most important parts of your application. I would suggest finding the people that you want to write your recommendations and then ask them really early on. Um, if you had one professor that you absolutely loved, you went and saw them for their like office hours every week, or like they just knew you really, really well, ask them earlier, then you're going to apply and just be like, hey, I'm interested in applying to med school. Would you be willing to potentially write me a recommendation in the future? That way, like you've already built that connection. They already know that in the future, you're going to come and ask for them. So you're not going back to them two, three years after you've had that class and be like, hey, remember me? Can I get a letter of recommendation? It's just so much easier if you already built that connection with them and have given them the heads up that I'm going to be asking you for a letter of recommendation in the future. Um, in terms of people that you can ask, it's a really a big variety. I know. Most schools will require you to have, I think, ooh, it's like maybe three teachers and then there's a couple others that you can throw on if you need. Um, so just finding those professors early on, especially the like STEM class ones are gonna be really important to have um, just because that's what schools are gonna be looking for. I think also I used both of like my research mentors and then also like one of my bosses just because they know me like in a very different setting and can speak to a different aspect of like who I am as a person and like what will make me a good medical student. Um, so I think having variety is really important, not necessarily pigeonholing yourself and being like, all of my letters are gonna come from a biology, from different biology professors. Um, I think that's okay to have, but I think it's a little bit stronger if you are able to talk about different aspects of you as a student. In terms of essays, I'd say give these a lot of time. The earlier you start, the better. Um, it's an iterative process. You're going to write it and then you're going to hate it a little bit and then you'll work on it a little bit more. Um, I can't tell you like how many times I like was working on my common app and I wrote the essay. I wrote it at least like 15 different times, just changing little things here and there, having people read it, throwing it away, restarting completely. I think it's never going to be perfect, but having other people to look over it and like giving yourself the time to really get it to a place where you're happy with it is really, really important. Um, and then also you're gonna be writing a bunch of essays for secondaries as well. And like, that's just kind of how the process goes. But if you can start those early, um, give yourself some time to allow other people to look over it and it's just gonna be that much better. Uh, with the interviews, uh, we could talk a little bit more about this if you guys have questions specifically about it, but I would say try to practice beforehand. You can go onto Google and just be like, common med school interview questions and then you can just run through them with friends so that way you're not blindsided by any like questions the day of the exam i know a lot of schools are moving towards mmi as well uh which is multi multiple mini interviews so basically you're giving you have like one prompt and then you have to answer that prompt in a certain amount of time and then you move on to the next one um, there's also a bunch of different prompts for the mmi questions so you could also practice those like it just to be prepared ahead of time um I think one of the most important things is to do your research on the school like everyone when you're applying to schools we all do our research on being like oh what I want to go here but I think really getting into the weeds once you get that interview being like okay what is the student culture like uh, how many students go here like what's the makeup of the ethnicities of the students like I don't know what did they do to help make sure their students were like prepared during COVID um, did they like support the Black Lives Matter movement? Like whatever is important to you, I think is important to ask those questions because um, it helps you really to, 
I mean, like, yes, you are interviewing to get into that school, but you're also interviewing to see if you want to go there, right? Like you want to make sure that wherever you go for med school, it's like the perfect fit for you. So make, don't be afraid to like ask questions to the interviewers and like really get a feel for what the school is like. Um, all right, so a little bit about what I'm up to now. So I'm currently a rising third year medical student. Uh, so I just finished my first two years. So basically these were my preclinical years. Um, they were primarily in the classroom. We had a little bit of clinical experience. A lot of that was cut short because of COVID, unfortunately. Um, I also took step one a few weeks ago, which is it's basically like the MCAT on steroids. Uh, it's over all of the medical school like curriculum that we've learned so far. Uh, it's like an eight hour exam, but I mean, the MCAT just helps prepare you for that. The way that um, at least UIC teaches the information was really helpful. Um, I think that it's just kind of getting through it. It's like another thing, another standardized exam that you just have to get through in order to like, it's the next stepping stone to get to the next part of the uh, process. Um, I'm gonna be starting clinical rotations at the end of April. So I'm gonna be starting with psychiatry at the VA, which I'm really excited about. You know, I've spent so many years and so much time in the classroom that I'm like, really ready just to start like seeing patients and being involved in like directly the care for everyone now. Um, I'm also involved in a variety of organizations. So, um, and like volunteering. So I do some volunteering like at the Pilsen Food Pantry. I'm also part of this program um, where we go out into the community and work with like um, underserved communities, just teaching the kids about like different medical school topics and like providing mentorship for them, um, which is not something that they get like at their home schools. Um, just making sure that they're as supported as they can be to pursue fields in um, medicine or whatever fields that they're interested in. I think medical school, you're really able to find like your corner and just drive into like whatever you're most interested in. Um, for me, like I knew that I was interested in like urology. Um, and so I was able to get involved with the urology interest group. And then I became president of it. Um, and now I'm like, able to have connections with like different physicians and everything and like have shadowing and like other resources like set up. Um, so just like undergrad, whatever you're interested in medical school, you can find it there. And if not, you can't find it, then you can make it like there's a lot of opportunity to start new clubs and everything in med school. Um, so honestly, a little bit about what I've thought about med school. It's the hardest thing that I've done, but it's easily the most rewarding. Um, you really get what you put into it like it's it's not going to be easy there's going to be a lot of late nights it's going to be a ridiculous amount of information that you have to learn but it's and not everything's going to be the most interesting but like the harder you work the easier it is and the more prepared you are going to be to be the best doctor um, i think that's the main goal for all of us who like want to go into medicine it's like i don't care about learning these different pathways or like what happens with this one specific i don't know like bacteria but I just want to make sure I'm prepared to treat patients in the future and make sure that like I'm a competent physician that can give my patients the best care. And so the harder you work at the beginning, the easier it's going to be in the long run. Oh, you guys um, also, the habits that you build are going to help like, set you up for success oh during medical school. Um, so the habits you build during undergrad are going to help set you up for success in medical school. So like if you know the ways that you learn best during then, like it's gonna be easier for you to like be really successful during medical school. The harder you work at the beginning, the easier things are in the long run. Um, and I think I just wanted to reiterate again, like everyone has a different story and a different path. You can only compare yourself to you. Um, it's easier said than done. It's really, really difficult in undergrad. I mean, all throughout life, honestly, um, but it's, it's not going to be a linear path for everyone. Some people take gap years, some people don't. Like I was one of the people who was able to go straight in. So I'm like on the younger side of my class, but all of my classmates, everyone deserves to be into medical school. We all deserve a spot there. Um, and so it, it's okay if things don't work out the way that you initially wanted to. Um, in the long run, it'll you'll get there. And so I just kind of threw in also a picture of like my friend group. These are some of the people that have like helped to support me while I've been in med school. And um, have really helped me get through like such a tough process. Um, okay, cool. So we're going to jump into questions now. I know I was kind of talking about a lot of different things. So let me know if you have any questions about anything. I'm going to stop sharing now. Okay, so yeah, I talked quite a bit. So if you guys need a second to kind of think about any questions you have, uh, then feel free just to unmute and ask me anything.
there any of the slides that you guys wanted to see again? Oh, here we go. Um, medical scribing. Oh, okay. I'll answer the first one first. So is there any clinical experience? Okay, so yeah, so the second research opportunity that I had um, that was like clinical research, that program was primarily, it was at Stroger and it allowed me to like interview different patients and then also help like provide them with like specific care. Um, so that's what I ended up using as like my clinical experience. Um, it was, I guess you could technically consider it to be like clinical research, but I put it more as like clinical volunteering on my application. Um, one thing that you can do is you can spin things in whatever way that works for you. So this is like one where I spun it in a way where it's like, I needed that clinical volunteering and I was able to um, use that as that way. So I guess it's a little bit more about like that research program. I, we had like a number of projects that we were working on all in the emergency department all of them involved us going up to patients and interviewing them or like asking them questions or doing surveys and stuff. And so we were like directly involved in a lot of the people's care. We worked under physicians. Um, basically it was like physicians had these different projects that they wanted to do. And then we were um, the undergraduate students that just helped to run them. Um, and then to answer your second question on medical scribing, I personally didn't do that. I know that there are definitely some people in my class that did it. Um, it's, I, I wouldn't be the best person to answer questions about medical scribing in specific. I know that it's a very common thing that a lot of students do. From what I've heard, it's not the most interesting. I mean, you get to see a good amount, but you're really just typing for the um, physicians. One thing that a lot of my friends did, and I think they found really, really uh, enjoyable was they actually became an EMT. Um, I think this was I know the school has a couple classes for it, but it's a great way to not only get paid, but get like a lot of very, very hands on clinical experience. Um, so I would suggest looking into that option before doing clinical or be, before doing scribing. I think scribing is a great opportunity if you find a, a hospital or like a, a physician where they're going to support you a lot. But I feel like a lot of times scribes can sometimes be tossed to the side and kind of looked at like is not part of the care team. And I think if you're trying to get a, a good clinical experience, you wanna be as involved with the care of patients as possible. Um, yeah. Any other questions? You can put them into the chat or just unmute and ask them. Yeah, okay. So I guess some of the habits that I'm thinking of are in, in medical school, the amount of material that we have to learn is so rigorous. I think it's it's important to develop a schedule. Um, so like the more you're able to like develop that schedule for yourself and like stick to your study schedule, the easier time you're gonna have adjusting to medical school. Um, I know that early on, I kind of was one of those people that I would kind of leave some of the work until like last minute and then do it at the end. Um, and with medical school, that's not really as feasible. Like it, you're, you can still definitely succeed, but for me, it didn't work that well. Um, I thought that having a set schedule where I would go to class like eight to five, and then from five to ten, um, or for like from I don't know, let's say like thinking back to my schedule when we were like in person, and everything it was like eight to three. We had class, three to seven. I would study seven to eight. I would work out and then I'd go home, have dinner, and then I would study again until like I was done with my work. Uh, so kind of developing that like rigid schedule um, was really, really helpful. And I think for a lot of students, it's it's nice to have that, like, I know exactly what I'm going to do every single day, um, or at least throughout the week. And then you're able to like take some time off on the weekends. Um, for me personally, I know that like working out or like playing soccer or just being outside was really, really important uh, for like my mental health. It's something that I wanted to prioritize. And so setting aside that time for things that you do love is really, really important just to like stay sane throughout it all. Um, medical school isn't easy. I mean, nor is any other career, but I think in particular, there's a lot of pressure put on medical students to succeed. Um, I think we're all in medical school, very type A. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make sure that we're succeeding at all times. And it's, it's okay to fail. Um, I ended up failing the second exam and that was like, kind of like that kick in my butt to be like, okay, I gotta get my stuff together. I really gotta like focus in, I gotta, talk to some people, try some new things. 
And then from there on out, like I did really, really well in all my exams. I've been succeeding. I've been like working really hard and like the results have been paying off. Um, so yeah, it, it's not easy to kind of develop those schedules for yourself. But I think if you're able to do it during undergrad, it'll just help you even more during med school. Um, and then balancing MCAT studying with my courses at UIC, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. I think um, I was lucky where I had a little bit of a lighter load that semester. Um, so I was able to dedicate a little bit more time to studying for the MCAT. Um, I primarily did those questions during the week and then the weekends on like Saturday, I would sit down and I would do a practice MCAT almost every Saturday leading up to my exam. Um, you just had to be really dedicated during that time. And I know a lot of people who ended up either graduating early or took like a semester off or something like that to study for the MCAT. Um, I think that's another really great option for students. It's it's going to be very dependent on what you feel is feasible for yourself. Uh, you have to really know yourself and know if it's too much at that time, because um, the MCAT is not something that you want to take over and over again if you can avoid it. Uh, if, if you have to take it again, like that's perfectly fine. But I think it just adds more stress and you put more pressure on yourself and it, it can it can really like wear you down over time. Um, so it's it's best to try to do as well as you can the first time. Okay, let's see. Self-care when you have a rough school week. Oh, that's, that's a really good one. So I think finding a good balance is really important during med school uh, as well as during undergrad. So I know that I have like a really solid group of friends where at the end of the week, if it's been a particularly rough week, like we'll go out and we'll have like a drink at like a brewery or like a bar or something. Um, like I said, like working out is really, really important to me and like just kept me safe throughout this time. Um, I like play a bunch of soccer. I like, live with my younger brother who's an undergrad at UIC. So him and I will go to like the park nearby and we'll just play for like an hour or two and I'll be exhausted at the end of it, but I'll feel like better. Um, I'm also like a religious person. So I think having like my faith has definitely helped me a lot um, knowing that I have like, like not necessarily like a fully set plan, but like I have someone watching over me. Um, and like my family has been really important to helping support me during this time. Uh, you have to have like that strong support group, whether it be friends or family, because um, it's not an easy path, but making sure that you have those people that you can turn to when it's been a particularly rough week or it's been a hard time is going to be really, really important. <clears throat> uh, let's see, any side jobs that you'd recommend? Um, let's see, apart from medical survivor being an EMT, thinking about jobs. I was pretty fortunate where I was able to get a lot of scholarship. And so I, I didn't have to worry about getting a job. I think whatever job you have or whatever, if you, if you need to get a side job that's not directly involved in healthcare, that's like perfectly understandable. I think that a lot of medical schools are, they're not gonna ding you for not having the time to like, like spend directly trying to strengthen your application. I think that just the way that you have to explain it on your applications be like, hey, like this is something that I had to do to support me or to support my family or to just get through undergrad. Like they're not gonna look at you any less because you had to get like a job because of that. Um, if it's, if it can be related to the healthcare field, whether it be a medical scribe or I don't know, working like front desk or anything at the hospital, like that would be ideal, but it's not absolutely necessary to have that job. Like one of my friends, she ended up working as, I think it was like a dermatology, what was it? it was like a dermatology assistant or something like that, where they like were able to work and do a lot of the procedures on their own under the supervision of like the physician. Um, so honestly, just like looking at hospitals and it, it's gonna be hard to get it at bigger hospitals, smaller clinics and stuff. There's gonna be more opportunity for those jobs for you to fill in, um, but they also might not pay as well. So it's trying to find that balance between what is my need and like what I can feasibly do is gonna be um, trying to find that balance. It's, it's not an easy thing to do, but if you can try to find that balance, that's ideal. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's come to funding. Yeah, so in terms of scholarship, I was actually pretty lucky where UIC uh, actually offered me some scholarship for medical school, um, which is, it's a pretty uncommon thing, but I think the more scholarship that you can find, I know like there's a lot of Hispanic funds um, that are available for uh, Latinx students going into the medical field. Um, it's just kind of doing that research for them. And then also like 
once you get into the school, be like, hey, this is what my need is. What can we do? Like, don't be afraid to email or like set up a meeting with the financial aid offices. Like, it can be really scary to do that, but getting over that initial like hump and then having that open conversation with them can lead to a lot of opportunities that you didn't know because they also know all of these different scholarships outside of the school that you can apply to. Um, and so just like the financial aid office at like UIC for undergrad, just reach out to them if you have some need. Um, and then, yeah, I think it, it's almost inevitable that everyone's going to take on some loans unless like you've had like a bunch, like unless you like are very wealthy going into the medical field, it's inevitable that you're going to have to take on some loans. That's kind of just part of the process. It's a really unfortunate part of the process, but like it is a thing that a lot of students have to do. Um, in the end, the I guess like the the potential earnings, the ceiling of like what we can make um, as medical professionals in the long run will help to kind of offset that. And so I guess like having the understanding that there is going to be some job security in the long run, there is going to be the opportunity for you to pay back those loans. It doesn't make it any easier to take on loans, but it I guess it it can sometimes give a little bit of comfort knowing that you will be able to pay them back in the long run. Uh, but I would definitely advise to try to find any scholarship you can find the loans with the least amount of like repayment, like the longest time where you can not pay them back just to give yourself a little bit of time to pay them back before the interest starts hitting. Um, it's just going to be a lot of research that you have to do. But I mean, it's, it's all part of the process and the, the outcome in the end is way, way worth it. All right, any other questions, guys? Anything about the process, anything about like what I'm doing in medical school? Any questions about like literally anything? Um, yeah, so I think it's, okay, let's see, I'll answer the first one. How many medical schools did I apply to? So if I remember correctly, I ended up applying to, I think it was around like 15. Um, so I applied to some of like the higher tier, which I knew they were going to be reach schools. I applied to some that were like, I think well within my means. And then some that were like a little bit more of the safety schools, um, just given like the application from like the students that I had talked to. Um, and I ended up interviewing, I completed three interviews and then I had gotten invited to a couple more when I started pulling my applications. I mean, honestly, as soon as UIC accepted me and then gave me the scholarship. I was like, okay, like I'm probably not going to get a better offer than what I got. So I just went with that and I pulled my application from everywhere else. So I, I didn't fully flush out like all the schools that I could have potentially gone to. Um, but I think being reasonable about where you think you are based on your GPA, based on your MCAT, based on your experiences, um, being realistic is really important. So um, I know a lot of my friends, like it's unfortunate, but there is somewhat of a difference between MD versus DO versus Caribbean schools. Um, the ideal being MD schools, of course, but there's, we're all gonna be working as physicians in the long run. We're all gonna be working together where you come from a Caribbean school, whether you're a DO, whether you're an MD. So if it's more realistic for you to go into a DO school and like, you don't wanna take a year off or like you've taken a year off and you're like, I just need to get into med school now, like absolutely apply to DO schools, apply to Caribbean, do whatever you need to do to get into med school and to get onto like the path that you want to. Um, it There's nothing wrong with being a DO physician versus being an MD physician. Um, it's just, everyone has a different path to get to that end point again. Um, okay, and then talking about like staying motivated during med school, it, it is really, really difficult. I think having that support group um, and making sure that you're in it for the right reason. I think is really important. Going into medicine, you can't go into it because of you want to make a bunch of money or because you want to be a prestigious person. Like you need to go into medicine for the right reason. Um, you really want to help serve people. You want to help give back to your community. You want to be that primary care person where someone comes in and they have no idea what's wrong with them. You're like, I can fix you. I can help you right now. I know exactly like what to do to get you back on your feet and back to what you do and what you like want to get to. <clears throat> so I think making sure that you're going into medicine for the right reasons has been that like motivation. Um, I think definitely having that strong support group is gonna be so, so important. 
it's not an easy process. The application is like hell. And then medical school is also really, really difficult. Um, and honestly, it's okay. Like if it's not for you though, like if you go into medical school and you realize like, actually, I don't want to do this. I'd rather be something else. Like that's, it, it, it's not any discredit to you. You worked really hard. You tried this out. It's not for you. That's okay. Like figure out what's best for you. Like you don't want to stick with being a physician when you know it, like you don't have the passion there because in the long run, like that's going to reflect onto your patients as well. Like if you're not fully passionate about it, then just find out what you are passionate about. Um, being a physician is a really difficult thing to do. And if you don't have that motivation and you're not fully committed to it and it's not what you want to do in the long run, then it's going to be really difficult to get all the way there and to succeed really well. Um, not saying that you can't do it, but I, I would say that making sure that that motivation is true and is what you truly want to do is really important. Um, okay, application for the medical school. Okay, so yeah, so to answer your last question first, I didn't take a gap year. So I started in 2015, um, I graduated in 2019, and then I started med school the fall of 2019. Um, so I got pretty lucky and I, I knew that I didn't really wanna take a gap year from like really early on. Um, I definitely had to work really hard. I had to like overload some semesters just because I was doing bioengineering. And then I was also taking all my pre-med classes at the same time. Um, <clears throat> I think it wasn't an easy time, but I'm appreciative. I, I don't think I made a mistake not taking a gap year. I guess it's kind of like the longer round answer. I think that for me personally, um, I wanted to just get into med school already and I wanted to get it going and just keep on moving through the process. And I was able to balance taking the MCAT. I was able to balance doing all my research positions, the application process um, all at the same time. It's not an easy feat. I had definitely some days where I was super overwhelmed with everything that I had to get done. But I think staying organized is really important when you have so much going on. Um, in terms of like the application process, uh, it's usually done through like uh, the AAMC, which is like the overarching board of uh, medical school applications. So you have different aspects of it. So the MCAT is one thing that you have to put. Um, then you have like the, the common app, which is basically a whole bunch of information about the classes you took, what grades you got, your GPA. Um, it also includes information where you write basically why you want to go into medicine. So I think it's a 750 word, if I remember correctly, um, essay where you're like, this is why I want to go into medicine. This is what like brought me to this point. This is why I'm motivated about it. Um, and then there's a couple other essays. Um, and then the, the really big thing is also your activities. So I think you can list 15 total activities um, where it's like, what did you do during medical school? And then it gives you an opportunity to talk a little bit about what you did. Um, so this was the time where I talked about my extracurriculars. I talked a lot about my research. I also talked about some of the classes that I took and I thought would like help me stand out a little bit more. Um, and then I think the last aspect of it is your recommendations. So I guess like the big four are MCAT, Common App, uh, recommendations, and then activities. And then that's your primary application that you'll send to a whole bunch of med schools. And then they'll screen you. If they think that you would be a good fit for a secondary, they'll send you a secondary, which is basically, hey, let's get a little bit more information from you and then fill out a couple of essays. Um, a lot of the essays are really similar between the schools, so you can reuse some of the essays that you write. Um, and then after that, they'll look over the whole application of everything that you've written, and then they'll either invite you to an interview or not. Um, and if you don't get invited to an interview, that's okay. That just means you weren't meant to go to that school. And then there's another school out there for you. And if you wanted to talk a little bit more about like exactly like the whole application process, I could help walk you through it. I might have to brush up a little bit on it because it's been a couple years, but I'm I'm sure I could figure it out again. Okay. While you guys are writing any other questions, if you have any, I'm going to put my email into the chat. Um, feel free to email me with like any questions you guys have. Just introduce yourself saying you were coming from this meeting. Um, I'm free to like set up Zoom meetings or something. We can talk a little bit more in depth about your application in specific, uh, any questions you might have. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any other questions right now?
and like I said, I'm speaking from my experience. Um, if you don't resonate with like my experience, I can always find, I have like a bunch of peers um, that I can connect you with as well that could help answer some questions. Um, I know like a good amount of the people in our med school class, both my year, a year younger, a year older, um, that I could connect you with as well. <clears throat> yeah, so if you don't get an interview, um, that's basically the end of that process for the school. Um, and so the process, it, the application opens on June 1st is I think the earliest you can submit. And then it goes all the way through like April-ish, maybe May. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but if you don't get an interview, usually that's the end of your process with the school. So most schools will have you send them a primary, they'll send you back a secondary, and then they'll invite you for an interview. Um, I'm not sure how they're doing it because of COVID, but I would assume most of them are virtual at this point. Um, and most schools are gonna give you an interview if they're interested. I don't think I've heard of any school that will accept you right out without an interview. Basically the interview is just to be like, can we see you fitting in with this school? So you look good on paper, but as a person, like, would we want you to be part of our student class? Um, a lot of people are like, oh, an interview is just to make sure you're not a weirdo, which honestly is like kind of true. Uh, they just want to make sure you're like a normal person that you'd make a good physician that you're not going to like, I don't know, that, that you're like a decent human being basically. Um, so once you get to the interview process, it's really just like you're at that last stage, just finish strong, um, give it your best. Um, you've done as much as you can up until that point. You just got to be yourself and like truly authentically. If they like you, then that's fantastic. If they don't, there's a better school out there for you. Any other questions, guys? HPSP scholarship program. Uh, I actually have not heard of that. The acronym is familiar, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, I don't know anyone who got involved with that. Um, I could ask around though, and I could get back to you. Um, but yeah, I personally don't know anyone who got involved with it. Well, thank you for coming to the meeting and like talking to us and asking and answering all of our questions. Yeah, of course. Yeah. If, is it okay if I like send your email like um, in like the emails that we send so that everyone yeah. has it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. Cool. Well, it was really nice talking to all of you. Best of luck on your journeys. It's going to be worth it in the long run. The hard work that you put in now is going to be, it's going to get you to where you want to be. Thank you for all the words, for all the advice, Julian. Thank you. All right. Yes, thank night. you. Me too. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. It's just us. Do we have any updates <laughs> to give? Or, or just like the applications, right? Yeah, pretty much the applications and the shirts. They're going to be distributed next Wednesday, the 14th on campus. Uh -huh. That's next week? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> it's going to be like in two weeks or something. Um, but yeah, that's basically all the deadlines that we have um, for these two weeks or the we, next week. We agreed as Student Center East, correct, for the shirts, if I remember correctly, for Wednesday? <laughs> Wednesday the 14th, right? Yeah. Yes. And Sebastian, yeah, you can. Uh, we're actually taking it until the 14th, until next Wednesday until like we, you pick it up. Um, it should be in the email. I'm pretty sure I emailed most of the people who signed up in the sheet, but you just Zell his phone number. I'll just write it again here in the chat. And then you like send an email to like the LPMSA email saying why you like sent it so that I could keep track um, for when I send it to the person who's making the merch. And the deadline for the e-board application will be next uh, 
yeah, it should be next Friday, the April April the sixteenth, and pretty much that same day, like when it's due, we'll send a like um a time so you can set up um uh, for your interviews. Uh huh. A thirty minutes left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could pay with Venmo too. I could just email you later um, if that's okay, Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian. Um, so I don't really know my handle, but I think I have like the code somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that's basically it. Thank you guys for coming to the meetings and being active and participating. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a good rest of your day. And good luck with your exams and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, take care. Thank you. I'm actually gonna head out too. Um, but bye, guys. Have a good week. Good week. Bye, bye. Pam. Take bye, care. Pam. Mm -hmm. I'm muted. Bye, guys. I guess. Bye. 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 And. Hi, wait, Jaime, just to confirm, sorry, I missed this, but what time are we all like going to meet What on Wednesday? What time? On Wednesday, um, I'll send out a uh, sign up sheet this one this Friday to see like, who could be um, there at what time. Uh huh. Because I know like not everybody could be there at the same time. Gotcha. Okay. So we can have at least cool. one person like as soon as they're used like distributing the shirts. Cool. Uh, I see. So then are we going to be taking like a group picture then or? Mm. I guess if we could stay like I don't know like if people could how late they could stay there mm -hmm. if not we could just like take a zoom photo or uh um photoshop wait I thought we were like all arriving at the same time and then taking the picture and then that like, was whoever my... has to leave leaves you know like mm -hmm. well, unless you don't want a picture behind it <laughs> I see how it is. I, mean. I know, right? He's like Zoom pictures. Just LPMSA, and then that's it. We're out of here. You'll never talk. <laughs> no, definitely. Like, definitely, I want to take a picture. It's just like the. I feel like people might not be able to ride at the same time. Maybe. Mm -hmm. They will. They will. You have to be confident. They will. Yeah, they will. Like, because remember, we talked about how like Wednesday we were kind of all free to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe we'll just talk in the group me and be like hey can y'all arrive at this time this because time for the picture yeah mm -hmm. like i know i have i have class until one that day but i could get there by 1 30 1 40 mm -hmm. yeah cool well i mean we'll text it in the chat to see what times we're all available and we'll get it sorted out yeah like i said like, I'll, I'll send a uh a sign up sheet on, on friday uh -huh. like we could just from that we could tell like if people will be there available at the same time mm -hmm. oh you know what i forgot i forgot to tell jonathan to do like a flyer to promote the club and have people like apply to eboard that mm -hmm. would be a good idea that'd be nice i'll text him yeah, yeah i'll text him on the group me that is it Cool, people. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye.